Welcome back to the Palm Tree Pack, everyone. I am sorry that I missed you last week, but here I am. I'm looking quite a state, so please ignore that. But as you can see, we are in a different part of my office because today we are going to make this lovely game chair cover. But I hope you guys are doing excellent. I appreciate you guys for coming. If this isn't your first time here in the Palm Tree Pack and you have yet to subscribe, but you do like our videos, I don't know what you're waiting for. You should definitely join us here in the Palm Tree Pack because we do DIYs and we just do like amazing shopping hauls. Like it's just a lot of fun here. So if you don't want to join, you don't have to, but I highly encourage it. Now let's go ahead and get started with this gorgeous game chair cover. Now I went to Joann's and I got this fabric and it was 40% off and I got a remnant. So I got about half a yard for 50% off of 40% off, which I don't know how much that is, but it wasn't a lot because it was like an extra $2, but it was an awesome deal. So maybe go check out Joann's for uh, the fabric for your chair. You can reuse fabric or you can reuse like a jacket or something that you like to use. So before you go to a store, before you find your fabric, take the measurements of your chair so that you know exactly how much you need. So first off, your measurements that you want to have is the length of your back of your chair for sure and the length of the seat part of your chair, so the cushion. And of course, if your chair is oddly shaped like mine, it has all these curves here, you will want to also measure the outsides of it. So here's some footage of what my measurements look like. I did like three different drafts to figure out which ones would give me the right measurements because it doesn't have to be perfect at this point you just have to know how much fabric you need i decided to be careful and get two and a half yards that left me with probably a yard left over so you could probably get away with just doing a yard but knowing my sewing skills i thought i'd just play it safe and get another yard but again completely up to you on how much you get and completely up to what size your chair is. So be sure to take those measurements. Now, once I took all my measurements, I got my fabric home. I kind of did a few different methods to figure out what worked best for me. Method number one was to take the measurements of each part of my chair and just kind of draw it out on my fabric per the measurements and then connect the dots between the measurements, if that makes sense. This did not work for me. I do not have a mathematical brain, so it didn't work. What did work though, the method of just putting it on the chair and pinning it around the edges worked the best, but it was really finicky. It was really like fumbly. So if you can do the measurement part, if you can think that out, I highly suggest it, but I felt more comfortable doing it on the chair just because I knew it fit at one point and then I just base stitched around the edges. Okay, so I'm sure that there's easier ways to do this, but because I'm just trying to figure this out myself, I literally just pinned the front to the back on the chair. I cut this piece off of the big piece of fabric. Hang on, my asthma. I measured as much as I could, you know, the widest parts and the length, so. And now we're gonna try to pull this thing off ever so delicately. <laughs> We're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew it. Using only a basting stitch at first, don't backstitch at the beginning or end and use a longer stitch setting. Stitch along the pins you placed. Be sure to check your string as you sew, make sure there are no bunches or crinkles. Okay, so I just did a basting stitch here, which means that I didn't backstitch at the beginning or the end, so if I need to, I can easily unpick this which is why it's bunching here. So I'm gonna go over it again when I figure that this is what I want. So we're gonna try this on the chair and yeah, we'll go from there. Looks fabulous. All of the markings on it, it's great. It looks pretty good. And this part right here came unstitched because I just did a basting stitch. So all of this right here, I had to repin. I'm gonna go over all of this again with the final stitch. I marked it with the marker following the seam so that if it does come unpicked again, I know. I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna sew it, finish it up, and then the top part will be finished. So we can move on to the bottom and then we'll get to the fun part and we'll put ears on the top of this chair. I think that's gonna be super cute. I'm super excited. Now I got the final stitch made and it's fitting pretty good. I'm actually really happy with how that's fitting. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off all of this excess here because that's the actual seam right there. Then we're gonna flip it right side out and make sure that it fits okay. And then we're gonna start on the bottom.
Now let's start the seat. Start by taking measurements of the seat. First, take the length all the way to where you want it to sit at the bottom. Next, measure the width. Don't forget to measure all the way under the seat, leaving enough length to make a half inch casing. Using the length and the width measurements you took, cut out your fabric. Make sure to include enough on the edges for a one inch casing. This next step, we are going to make a casing for our yarn or elastic. Okay, so this is going to be a temporary solution, but I'm just going to use some yarn and thread it through here and use it as an attaching mechanism until I can get um, the clips that I want to get, the buckles. I'll put a picture of it right here because um, that's ultimately how I want to attach this. I'm going to leave plenty of extra at the end so I have enough to tie. And I wanted to use some thicker yarn just so that it would be easier to tie and everything, just make it a little bit better to work with. And this way just seemed easier to me, sorry. This way just seemed easier to me to do than to try to like pull it through the edges and everything because this yarn is going to be pretty catchy. And by catchy, I mean it'll create a lot of friction so it's not just gonna slide through really easily. Once you have your drawstring or elastic in place, sew the casing shut, being careful not to sew onto the string. Once you are finished making the casing, put it on your chair and pull it tight. Tie it up and cut off the extra. If you're using yarn, be sure to tie the knots at the end of your yarn to prevent any unraveling. So this is what it looks like on the bottom here with the strings attached. And with it fully taut, it bunches like this and holds on the bottom. Now, as I said, this whole string situation is just a temporary situation until I can get some buckles, which who knows how long that will be. I will put the link of the buckles down in the description box below, as I said, so that you know what I'm talking about, um, if you do want to use the buckles as well. But if you are wanting to do the poor man's version, this works great as well, nobody notices, and it's cheap. I mean, I used yarn, so doesn't get much cheaper than that. Next up, the armrest covers. I'm going to use just a little uh, scrap piece of fabric from the chair part that I cut. And I'm gonna leave plenty of extra around the edges. So just place it right in the middle like that. Then we're basically just gonna fold over a casing and I'm gonna cut some length off. Now there is of course another way to do this and you can measure if you'd like. and measure around the armrest and get the right dimensions. But this way I found is easier for me just because I can visualize it better. Now I hope you guys can see that, but we basically just created a bigger shape of the armrest so that we can make our casing. And we're essentially just going to fold this over the yarn. If you're going to use yarn, if you're going to use elastic, same, same method basically, but you can thread the elastic through if you want. So I'm going to copy this on another piece of fabric so I get them generally the same. And we'll go from there. This is the one that we just marked, so I'm going to cut around the edges with plenty of allowance. Now of course we already gave allowance before, but this is just so that I have room to make a good casing. Let's see if this will be big enough to use. We will be cutting it close, but worst case scenario, we use an actual full piece of fabric and we just wasted a remnant, so this should work okay. So now we got our two arms. 
now I'm going to pin the yarn in. And this is super low budget if you wanna do it this way. If you choose to do it the other way, that is perfectly fine. But this way you guys can get a more immediate result and then you can just kinda of replace it later because you can reuse this casing, take the yarn out, and put the elastic in once you have it. But at least this way you guys can get your chair cover more immediately. And if you're like me, I like immediate results. Now, like before, I'm going to leave plenty of excess at the end so that I can leave a nice knot and cut off any excess, just so that I'm not left with too little yarn. By the way, you guys, I believe it will be next week or a couple weeks in advance. I will be doing a um, video for Andy's pajamas, how I do Andy's footy pajamas. I'll put some footage right here of Andy's footy pajamas. And uh, I've gotten lots of requests on how I make those for her, so I thought that I'd finally make you guys a video for that. If it is ready by the time I post this, I'll link it in the description and in the end cards. Not perfect, but I'll take it. Attach the covers by tying your yarn tight. Then tie knots at the end of your yarn to prevent any fraying. Tuck all the loose ends underneath the cover. If you're using elastic, pull it tight, then sew it together. You can hand sew or use a machine for this part. Backpack originally had ears on it and I brutally took them off and I stuffed them with polyfill and these are going to be ears for our new chair cover. While this was on the chair I marked where I want the ears to sit so that I know where to sew them. Next up is that we are going to sew these ears to the chair cover. So that is it for this video today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's DIY. I recently started doing gaming live streams, so if you guys are interested in that, you guys can check that out. I do Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion, and I also have Goose Game. I do apologize about the lighting, but today has been kind of like a throw it together kind of day, so I apologize. But I really appreciate you guys joining me today. Also, don't forget to check out our sister channel, Dre of Sunshine. It is a great place to be. Even though we are realistic, we are also optimistic. So learn how to be positive even though your body and your health might have other plans. Now, if you guys would like to see more Palm Chi DIYs, be sure to check out this playlist up here. We have lots of cheap DIYs that you can do because this girl knows how to be a poor person. I've been a poor person my entire life. Don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see more Palm Chi DIYs. Both Palm Chi Productions and Dre of Sunshine have some awesome content. Now have a great day you guys. Stay safe, be kind, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!